Last week we discussed the NNT, or number needed to treat. I'm sure it made a lot of you upset to realize that many therapies you've been sold as awesome were in fact somewhat incremental with respect to benefits. But it's gonna get worse. A lot of those therapies are anything but benign. They come not only with costs, but also with side effects or problems. We can quantify harms too. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Every time you take a drug or engage in some sort of treatment, you take a risk. Exercise, for instance, can lead to some injuries. Drugs have side effects too. They can cause rashes, diarrhea, or other issues. Surgeries can lead to infections or even death. Sometimes those harms are calculated in terms of relative percentages. Your risk doubles and such. As with benefits, we should avoid relative risks. We care about absolute risk increases. Those are reported in many trials too. Let's make up an example. Let's say that 20% of people who take a certain antibiotic develop bad diarrhea. In the same study, 10% of those who didn't take the drug developed diarrhea too. If you go with a relative risk, then the drug doubled your chance of having diarrhea. If you go with an absolute risk, then the drug increased your risk of diarrhea from 10% to 20%. So your absolute risk went up by 20 minus 10, or 10%. Here's another example. Let's say that 0.1% of people who don't have surgery for a certain illness get diarrhea. Let's say that 0.2% of people who have the surgery develop diarrhea. If you go with relative risk, then surgery doubles your risk of diarrhea. If you go with an absolute risk, then surgery increased your risk of diarrhea from 0.1% to 0.2%, so your risk went from 0.2 to 0.1 or 0.1%. In relative risks, these are similar. They both doubled the risk of diarrhea, but in absolute risks, they are way far apart. The drug increased your risk by 10%, surgery increased it by 0.1%. Just like we calculated numbers needed to treat, we can calculate numbers needed to harm. We can calculate the NNH by taking 100 and dividing it by the absolute harm increase. Let's start with the drug. It had an absolute risk increase of 10%. Therefore, the NNH is 100 divided by 10, or 10. That means that for every 10 people we give the drug to, one extra person will have diarrhea. Granted, more won't, but it's important to understand that one in 10 people will have the bad outcome. With the surgery, the absolute risk increase was 0.1%. Therefore, the NNH is 100 divided by 0.1, or 1,000. That means that for every 1,000 people who have surgery, one extra will have diarrhea. That's much better than for the drug. Just as NNT is rarely discussed, so is NNH. But we should, because comparing the NNT and the NNH provide people with a simple and objective way to determine if therapy's worth it. Let's take some examples. Last week I told you that the NNT for aspirin to prevent a first heart attack or stroke was 1,667, but the NNH is 3,333 for a major bleeding event. Granted, the chance of you having a benefit is greater than that of a harm, but the harms are real. Remember how I told you the NNT for a chest CT to prevent death in one year among high-risk smokers was 217? I bet a lot of you thought that sounded okay because it's, well, death. But what about harms? It turns out that the NNH for a false positive diagnosis was four. That means one in four people will have a positive scan that turns out not to be disease. The NNH for unnecessary surgery was 30. The NNH for a surgical complication was 161. So one in 217 will see a benefit in death prevented. But one in 161 will have a surgical complication, one in 30 will have unnecessary surgery, and one in four will have a lot of needless worry. Not as clear now. Lots and lots of people without known heart disease are put on statins. I recently discussed this in a piece in the New York Times. But statins have never been shown to prevent death in this population. Period. The number needed to treat is effectively infinity. The NNT to prevent a heart attack in this population is 60. The NNT to prevent a stroke is 268. Realize that this means that 59 of 60 people who take the drug get no heart attack benefit, and 267 of 268 people who take it get no stroke benefit. And there are harms. The number needed to harm for developing diabetes is 50. The number needed to harm for developing muscle damage was 10. Think about that. One in 60 may see a heart attack prevented, but one in 50 will get diabetes. You're more likely to get diabetes than to see the benefit. Worth it? The world is full of examples like this. I'm a pediatrician, and I see a lot of kids with ear infections. When parents want antibiotics, I like to talk in these terms. 
you could give 10,000 kids antibiotics and none would be less likely to see serious complications. None would have less pain in 24 hours. Antibiotics don't work there, and the NNT is again effectively infinity. But yes, some kids will see less pain within a week if they take antibiotics. The NNT is 16. We have to treat 16 kids with antibiotics for one to see that benefit. 15 of them will see no benefit at all. And one out of every nine kids given antibiotics, that's the NNH, is likely to develop diarrhea. So by giving your child antibiotics, I'm more likely to give them diarrhea than to reduce their pain in a week. Alternatively, you could give them pain meds, which don't have those side effects and won't build up resistance in bacteria. Guess which option my patient's parents choose most of the time? The pain meds. Thinking about benefits and harms in this way makes a difference.